Herself, and uh, I can't remember she, the the fire was uh, the heat was turned up too much, and uh, she slipped on something and uh, she hit her head on the corner of the stove, and uh, she you know it was you know she had to go to the hospital. The doorbell rang and we went out to see who it was. When we got back to the kitchen, a grease fire had started. My mother put water on it. That made it worse. In fact, the curtains caught on fire. I was really scared and pulling a pan out of the oven without a pot holder. All kinds of stuff. I've done it all. <laughs> My little brother, who was about three years old at the time, got into the cabinet under the sink and drank some drain cleaner or something. My mother was hysterical. My father got into the hospital's emergency ward in a hurry. But Kevin was in real pain for at least a couple of days. I was really surprised to learn that the kitchen is a very dangerous place. I've cut myself on a knife. But until I read the National Safety Council statistics, I didn't realize that a lot of people get hurt in the kitchen, some badly. The National Safety Council says that the leading cause of accidents in the kitchen, as you see in picture number eight, are falls, fires, burns, chemicals, and shocks. We've got to be aware of the possible problems if we want to avoid accidents. One serious cause of accidents in the kitchen is falls. A common problem is that people store heavy objects up high in some hard-to-get-at place. Only put the lightweight stuff up high. In fact, try not to store anything on the top shelves that are out of reach. And, when you can't reach them, always use a solid chair or stool to step up so you can reach the shelf easily. You may think you'll save time by not getting the chair to stand on, but it's not worth the risk. Of course, falls don't have to happen because you're reaching to high places. Wet, greasy, or wax spots on the floor can cause people to slip and fall. And a surprisingly large number of people fall because they trip on some unexpected object in the room. Another danger in the kitchen comes from the fact that high heat is used in the kitchen for cooking. High temperatures can cause fires. A common fire is the grease fire. I suppose we've all had the experience of cooking something in the frying pan, like hamburger or bacon, or maybe there's grease left over in the broiler from last time, and a small grease fire starts. But what if you don't notice the fire because you're distracted by the telephone, or by someone at the door? What if your baby cries in the next room and you go to take care of the baby, and you leave your cooking unattended? When you get back to your cooking, you may find a real problem. What should you do when there's a grease fire? What will happen when water is used on a grease fire? Water will make a grease fire worse. The flaming grease floats on top of the water. In fact, it jumps from the water, and the fire can spread to nearby objects, such as potholders hanging over the stove, curtains, loose clothing, or long hair. So, what are two things you should do if you have a grease fire? First, Turn off the heat. Second, put something onto the fire that is heavy and will smother it. A tight-fitting lid will do a good job. Baking soda is good. So is salt. Remember, water will make a grease fire worse, and the way to extinguish a grease fire is to smother it. Cooking can be fun. However, because most bad kitchen accidents take place while cooking, it's best to be aware of the things that can catch on fire in the kitchen. The most painful kitchen fires are those in which you catch on fire. For example, if the pilot light goes out on a gas ranger oven, turn the gas off. Wait for a couple of minutes. Then, light the match first before you turn the gas on. This girl, she had, uh, she, well, the stove didn't turn on. You know, it was, the pilot was off, so she started to get a match. She she couldn't reach the pilot, so she got a little piece of paper, and she rolled it up and she put a, a match to it, and stuck it into the pilot, and it blew up, and half her hair was burnt. She had long hair, and it was just burnt. 
it was shin it cinched it about three, four inches. That reminds me. Long hair burns very easily. It's a real danger if it hangs down over gas burners or into an oven. We should keep our long hair tied back while we're cooking. And the kind of clothes you wear while cooking can affect whether you catch on fire. Can you tell what the fire hazard is with the clothes this girl is wearing? Well, the clothes are loose fitting and are made of flammable material. She's just asking for trouble. You know, we don't need a special uniform to work in the kitchen. Just common sense. Okay. We've talked about falls and fires. And now, let's talk about burns. I was taking a pot out of the oven, and it was really hot. And I was in a hurry, so the first thing I could see to guard my hand was a dish towel. And so I grabbed the pot really fast, and the dish towel was too thin, and I burnt my hand. And then I was pulling it really fast, and I burnt my arm. And I had second-degree burns, and I had to go to the hospital. More than anything else, when we're in a hurry, we may try to move hot things without proper pot holders. Sometimes we're tempted to use a dish towel or the corner of an apron. But these weren't made to handle hot things. Keep good, thick pot holders within easy reach around your kitchen. Burns from scalding water or other hot liquids can be very painful. Pot handles sticking out over the range are unnatural to get hit, knocking the pot to the floor or onto you. At the same time, when you do turn the handles in, don't place them directly over some other burner that's turned on, or else you'll really grab something that's hot. And loose handles can cause you to lose your grip on hot pans. Keep those handles tight with a screwdriver. Sometimes it's hard for me to believe there are so many accidents in the kitchen. Auto accident? No, kitchen accident. There are twice as many disabling injuries in the home as there are from all car accidents. And one quarter of all disabling accidents in the home occur in the kitchen. Now, one of the most needless causes of bad accidents in the kitchen is from medicines and household chemicals. It's generally the very young children who suffer. But you can help. If you have very young children in your house, or if you're babysitting, the young children watch you and are naturally curious. They see you using the medicines and chemicals. You know that they're dangerous, caustic, or poisonous, but the young children do not. Overdoses of common medicines such as aspirin lead to many deaths each year. It's been estimated that over one million children a year swallow harmful household substances, and there's no excuse for it. We as adults should make it impossible for the children to get at them. One thing we can do is put these household chemicals on a shelf that's not in the kitchen, that's too high for the child to reach, and where there's nothing below for the child to climb on. Another idea is to lock the doors to the cabinet. Of course, it's not just children who have accidents from chemicals. It's always a good idea to store dangerous chemicals like oven cleaner, furniture polish, dishwater compound and drain cleaner away from things we use for cooking. With all these potential dangers from the kitchen, it's a good idea to have the family doctor's phone number handy in case of emergencies. Another serious danger in the kitchen comes from electric shocks. The reason is that our bodies conduct electricity, and so does kitchen water. So, if there's a leakage of electricity from an appliance, and you're working around water, there's a chance of getting a shock when you touch the water and the appliance at the same time. Good safety rules for electricity are, one, when you're working with water, keep your hands away from electrical appliances. Two, when working with electrical appliances, Stay away from water. Finally, replace bad cords and plugs on appliances. And when you pull the cord from the receptacle, pull on the plug itself. Well, that about does it for electrical shocks. Of course, there are a lot of other dangers in the kitchen. For example, when you break glass on the floor, clean it up promptly. And use a wet paper towel to get the small pieces without cutting yourself. Keep your knives sharp 
That way you won't push hard, slip, and cut yourself. Work with a cutting board and always keep your hands behind the knife blade. When you're washing dishes, it's a good idea not to dump the sharp knives into the soapy water where you can't see them. You know, it's a wonder we've survived the dangers of the kitchen. We'll all survive a lot longer if we're aware of the dangers like falls, fires, burns, household chemicals, and electric shocks. Okay, it's time for a quick review. And think about which things you do differently the next time you're in the kitchen. You've learned to use a chair or stool to reach high places. To turn off the stove when you have a grease fire and then smother the fire with a lid or baking soda. Keep good pot holders within easy reach of the stove or oven. Keep common medicines and household chemicals out of reach of small children. Keep your hands dry when handling electrical appliances. And you've probably learned a lot of other things, too. Keep these things in mind, and I'm sure you'll have a happier and safer life in the kitchen. Thank you.